Hello, I'm Soycat, and here is a fun piece of trivia that you're living through. The UK's Prime Minister, Liz Truss, just resigned, and this is kind of a big deal because she was only appointed to the post six weeks ago. This means that she is, officially speaking, the shortest serving Prime Minister ever. Here is a list of all the Prime Ministers. There's been 56 people to take that role, and there is no limit to how long you can serve. That's why the longest Prime Minister has been Robert Walpole with 20 years and 314 days, and he's at the very top of this list, whereas at the very bottom, down in 56, Sixth place is Liz Truss with just 44 days as Prime Minister and that is a really crazy fact because the guy above her, George Canning, only uh, lost office because he died. Which means that yeah, resigning after six weeks is not just a little bit of a disaster, it's kind of a very big disaster uh, for the government I would say and also probably personally for Liz Truss, our third uh, female Prime Minister. Which you've got to say, there's some gender equality to the list, the fact that there's 56 and you can see all three free, uh, Prime Ministers, uh, have there been ladies, have been kind of mixed in there. We've got one of the longest serving ever, the longest of the modern era, Margaret Thatcher, uh, with 11 years and 208 days. Then we've got a middle of the pack one with Theresa May, with 3 years and 11 days. And then all the way down here at the bottom is Liz Truss at 44 days as Prime Minister, um, the shortest serving one ever. Although, the Prime Minister's a weird position. I mean, how are there two disputed Prime Ministers of the UK? The answer is it's very, very confusing and we've got a fun system. Uh, but I, I do think that, I, uh, that this list of Prime Ministers does kind of prove that that actually, although term limits sound like they're important, most Prime Ministers don't serve past what you would put in as a term limit. They only serve until they're popular, which is always going to uh, dwindle eventually, I guess you could say. And so yeah, what caused the shortest reign ever of 44 days as Prime Minister? Let me give you a brief overview. So on the 5th of September, Liz Truss was elected, Elizabeth uh, obviously being the, the, the real name there, Liz is just a fun shorthand, which because she's called Elizabeth, it meant that for a while there was two people called Elizabeth in charge of the UK, and until September the 8th, when there was just one again because Queen Elizabeth II officially died. This is kind of crazy if you ask me, because now for the first time uh, since Liz Truss has resigned, for the first time since the 1950s, there have been zero people called Elizabeth in charge of the UK, and uh, yeah, that's kind of a crazy fact by itself. But it's also crazy that just uh, two weeks into her uh, prime ministerial uh, thing, she decided to capitalize and just say, okay, every single prime minister when they get elected, they have pledges. Let's just do all those pledges. Let's cut all the tax and let's do all the things that people have been telling us to do. And so the chancellor, uh, Kwasi Kwarteng, said, yeah, let's cut all these taxes. But rather than doing the logical thing when you say, we're going to cut taxes, so we're going to cut our spending to match our new revenues because obviously we're going to have less of it. They said, nah, we're just going to magically grow and it's all going to, it's all going to work out. Don't worry about it, man. And so the market did not like this. And on the 26th of September, the pound hit an all-time low against the dollar. To show you this uh, real quick, uh, it, it looks pretty, it looks kind of bad on a short-term graph, but if I show you this on a five-year graph, you can see the pound had just about stabilized to 1.4. It was dipping this year to 1.2 because the, the uh, you know, the, the, the dollar is at a very strong time in history. Interest rates are very high in the US, etc, etc. Uh, but it dipped to an all-time low this week, um, which is really, really crazy to say. Uh, what's even crazier, by the way, is the fact that Liz Trust going, you know, a Prime Minister resigning is something that the market's cheering at and went, oh yes, <laughs> it's over now. Because if you want a bit more of a detail about this, uh, the way uh, the way it worked is they announced a mini budget where not only did they uh, announce massive uh, tax cuts, which again, there is probably some argument, you know, there's, there's a politically conservative argument that they were trying to make that if you cut taxes, you increase the economy because people have more money and people are better at spending money than the, y you can make that argument uh, and it might work, but at the same time as saying massive tax cut, humongous, 76, uh, thousand million, that's 76 billion in tax cuts, plus a 63 billion tax cut for corporations, plus a stamp duty reduction, plus, uh, you know, a lot of other things in here to kind of, uh, that would bring the government less revenue, at the same time saying, we're just gonna support energy bills, no matter how high they go, we're gonna cap them at a per unit cost. That it, it's, it's a huge 60 billion funding for half a year of that. Also cost of living reductions. Again, we're having a big inflation crisis. How do you fix inflation? Borrow, make money out of nowhere and give it to people. That, that's how it works. It's really good. That's So if you look at the whole thing, it's like, well, they didn't announce any spending cuts. They just said, let's rise spending and cut taxes and see how that goes. And you know how that went? Well, according to the markets, 
not very well. The UK's borrowing costs went from 1%, which is like, you know, pretty good uh, price to pay, 2% over this year, because again, like interest rates been rising everywhere, to 4.48%. So there was this massive increase, huge, like seriously, 76 billion is just one of the measures, but massive increases in pledged spending and pledged debt, while also saying that at the same time, the cost of that debt would be ridiculous. So in other words, uh, things had to be stepped up and the ch Chancellor of the Exchequer was actually fired. That's right, Liz Truss was in power for 42 days, but her Prime Minister had to resign. On the 14th of October, he was replaced with Jeremy Hunt, which means that although the Prime Minister is kind of crazy, we've had uh, four Prime Ministers since 2010. Uh, we had uh, with D David Cameron, then uh, Boris Johnson, sorry, Theresa May, then Boris Johnson, now Liz Truss. Four Prime Ministers in nine years, it's or 12 years, is kind of a crazy stat, but what's way crazier is the fact that if you look at Chancellors of the Exchequer, um, since 2022, just this year, just, you know, the, the current year we're living in, we had Rishi Sunak who was in charge until he resigned to uh, argue that Johnson should stop being Prime Minister. Then Johnson replaced him with uh, Nadim Z I, I'm not going to get that name correct, but uh, he replaced him uh, with uh, this guy, who also uh, <laughs> then immediately said that Boris Johnson should resign. And so then Boris Johnson did resign. We got a new Chancellor from Liz Truss, who is, uh, you know, who again, uh, caused, you could say, all of this crisis. Maybe he was acting under order from Liz Truss. Who knows for sure? All we know is the UK is in a pretty big financial issue because of it. Um, a budget which, by the way, was immediately reversed. It has to be mentioned that uh, if you look at the uh, the government's uh, pl plans, they, they announced these huge tax cuts which spooked the market. Then they just basically said they were undoing them, but the damage is still done. Like, until Liz Trust resigned just now, you can see the pound hasn't gone back to where it was before. Uh, the pound is kind of like, uh, and again, like, it's just kind of stayed roughly flat, a little bit below where it was before, which is kind of staggering to say that the markets were just like, well, we can't trust you anymore. And so the hope is that they can trust them now, but that still means that Jeremy Hunt, who will be the Prime Minister, sorry, who will be the Chancellor of the Exchequer, will likely be replaced by whoever becomes the next Prime Minister. Which means that the, uh, so the Chancellor is the second most powerful position in the UK. It's like a, um, it's like a Vice President, if instead of just deciding, uh, you know, doing vote ties in the Senate and uh, being popular with a different demographic to the president. It's like, a, you know, the, the chancellor is actually in charge of the money, in, in theory at least. Obviously, he serves the prime minister, so it's vice president in that way. Uh, but yeah, you get the point that having four in one year is crazy. We're about to have our fifth, unless the next prime minister picks Jeremy Hunt as their uh, you know, Chancellor. Which, it's worth mentioning, he could run for Prime Minister himself, making it physically impossible for him to be Chancellor. I think that's true, at least. I, I don't think there's ever been a Prime Minister that's been their own Chancellor, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Anyway, speaking of things I might be wrong about, because... <laughs> wow, that's this whole channel, huh? Um, but, uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's very crazy to see uh, the list of, like, esteemed office holders of the second most powerful uh, part of the UK just go to, like, yeah, we got... We got... In fact, on the timeline, it's going to look funnier, right? We're like, okay, so chance to serve, like, as long as a prime minister, like, four, eight, maybe ten years for, like, Lord Clark of Nottingham. The Lord Clark of Nottingham? Is that, is that, uh, who, who the heck is, what sort of a name is that? I, I, I really want to know. That, uh, okay, uh, that must be Gordon Brown? Why is he called that? Anyway, um, so, no, it's not Gordon Brown. Anyway, so if you look at the... <laughs> uh, if you look at the uh, the list right here, it's very very interesting to see. Uh, you can see that like, oh yeah, on the on this end, it's just like did, 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 little, little little dots. Uh, the UK is going through a bit of a crisis right now, and uh, yeah, on, and that's on top of the fact that we're going through the other crises that the whole world is dealing with, and that's not very good, some might say. However, here's the question, right? So now that Liz Truss has resigned because of uh, the, uh, her own party basically saying, how are we doing so bad in the poll? How is it possible to do this bad as a party? International markets hate us, our own voters hate us, the public hates us, and therefore they hate you. And so she resigned to stop all of that. And so now uh, the question is who becomes the next prime minister? And it looks like it's going to be, I mean, the, th this is a funny thing. So this is betting markets. Betting markets aren't political analysts, but they have to be good enough at being political analysts to make a profit. You know, they're the only people making predictions of actual money behind it. They overwhelmingly are favoring Rishi Sunak with better than 50% odds, basically. However, fourth on the list of potential next prime ministers is... Boris Johnson. We could have a situation uh, that I... Again, we've had situations where Prime Ministers have come out of power, then come back in. I mean, if you look at uh, Robert Walpole, for example, 
Apparently one term? What? <laughs> but if you look at uh, your certain prime ministers, William Erwitt Gladstone, one of the famous prime ministers of the UK, uh, he, he spread it over four non-consecutive terms, beginning in 1868 and ending in 1894. Which is crazy to say, like, his first term is like, um... His first term is 1868, then he takes a term in 1880, then a third term, the temporary one in 1986, and then a fourth one in 1982. Like, that's, that's very, very wild to imagine in modern day politics. Nowadays, when you lose an election, you're dead. Um, but here's the thing, right? Boris Johnson did not lose an election. Uh, if you, if you, if you, if you want to dive into this one, so he's the 32nd longest serving prime minister. He did, he, he, in fact, he won an election in 2019, I want to say. Uh, it was right. So he won an election and then he lost because of, you know, uh, partying during COVID and all the other uh, things about it. And so uh, as a result, some might argue, well, I mean, that's not the death of a potential prime minister. And so that we might have the weird case where a prime minister was ousted. And then six weeks later, because uh, Liz Trust confirmed that the next prime minister is coming in a week uh, or next week in the next week. So I guess that's potentially up to eight days. But in eight days... Uh, potentially, it's it's not likely, but it's not the most likely. It's like the fourth most likely event, I guess you could say, based on betting odds. There is a chance that we end up with the weird situation of a prime minister who was ousted for seven or eight weeks and then came right back. That would be wild, but it's not impossible. And that's kind of fun, right? Yeah, UK politics. It's going pretty well. Um, How is the country going as a whole? Well, I mean, if you look at, like, metrics, like, you know, we're borrowing... Lots and lots and lots of money at ridiculously expensive rates. And our currency is being flushed a little bit by comparison to major global ones, you could say. Um, it's Again, I, I always want to clarify, it's only compared to the dollar. Like, I mean, it's it's not great compared to... But if you look at the euro, it's gone down a, a lot too. Because the, the dollar is just strengthening. But the pound is doing especially bad, uh, it has to be mentioned. And uh, yeah, the answer is it'll probably get better eventually, maybe. Or maybe it just gets worse. Uh, that's the cool thing about... Uh, following politics, right? You never know which way it's gonna go. And uh, all we know for now is there will be another prime minister on the list of prime ministers. And if they can make it more than six weeks, then Liz Truss will officially be our shortest serving prime minister ever. And that is a cool piece of trivia. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to give me money for it, go to patreon.com slash toycat and uh, you can do that. I actually uploaded a video just before this happened. So, you know, I'm just saying two videos in one day. Wow, I spoil you, don't I? Um, but yeah, there's there's more shorts coming as well. I, I, I like the balance of like shorts and regular videos we have on the channel right now. I hope you do too, because it's going to be happening regardless. And yeah, I'll I'll let you know who becomes... I won't let you know who becomes Prime Minister. You'll hear about it somewhere ever. And uh, have a good day, because I don't really care if you do actually. Goodbye.